Welcome to Match Fishing Masterclass. You join me here today on the club pool at Bowen Hill Mill Fishery. And today we're going to go through shallow fishing. Fishing shallow for car is actually a dead simple tactic, but you need to get the fundamentals right. The most important part is feeding, and the rigs come after that. So I've got two rigs today set up, both of them are identical when I start but one of them will stay the same and then I've got another one what's a working rig so they're both set up on Preston DWI short kits these are brilliant for shallow fishing because they're dead light they stiffen up your pole and then inside them I've got a 10 to 12 elastic running down we've got and 017 main line. Then we've got the float, which is a mud liner from dot and down and point three. And then we've just got a small bulk of shot underneath the float. And then we've got 12 inch to allow the, the, the pellet to fall slowly. And then we've just got a, a six, in, six inch hook length down to a size 16 KKM with a band on it. Okay, just before I get out there, I'm just going to feed a few, few pellets, feeding like three or four pellets twice, and then ship out. I'm just going to slap the rig over. Now, I'm not slapping the rig so much now to make too much noise. What I was doing is just straightening the rig out more than anything. The slapping part comes once you start to get bite shallow. So it's just about getting into a process. I'm just going to feed twice, slap my rig over to straighten it out, and then come above the float. then as soon as you do get a bite you're in control of the fish okay no bites I'm just going to feed again twice and slap the rig over to straighten it out just slapping it over once And I'll go through this process for a, for a few minutes. I won't, won't do it for too long. Five minutes maybe. And then what I'll do, I'll come back and pick up my working rig. And instantly, I'll start to search the depths to try and find them, them fish. So I've fed twice. Slap it over. Again, no bites. Feed again twice. Uh, 
and slap it over. No bites again. I'll do this once more and then I'll come back and pick up that that working rig. It's quite a lot of blowing in the peg now. And no bites. <clears throat> Let's come back. Whilst my rig's out the water, I'll still make sure that I'm feeding. Went a bit too far. It's better. Pick up that working rig. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put about six inch on this. Pull them shot up. As I was saying earlier, the carp will, will watch the pellet fall. So you want that slow, that rig falling through the water really slow. Don't worry about not seeing the bites. The carp will let you know once they've took the bite, trust me. Again, just going to ship that out. Gonna feed. Feed. Slap the rig over. Feed. Feed. Slap the rig. As you can see, I'm just using the pellets at the moment to create the noise for me. Okay, again, now, boys, what I'm going to do going to feed again, come back, add a bit more on the, on the rig, just going to pull them shots up again, Right. Just, oh, there we go. Straight away. We've got one. Did you realise how I didn't, I didn't feed before I slapped the rig over then? Because we've, we've been feeding quite frequently, fish will come in your peg just to have a look. So it's worth now and again not feeding and just slap your rig over once. If you're fishing for F1s, you, you tend to just have to keep slapping. 
calf are totally different. Slapping sometimes can um, can have the opposite opposite effect. What I'm going to do once I've broke off my top five. I'll just hold the hold the pole nice and low and I'll just feed feed some bait. Just feed twice. Reason I didn't break down at my top kit is because the fish can all of a sudden go for another run. That way I want a couple of sections on just to follow them out. However now I broke down to my top kit, if it does run out. I've got two sections behind me that I can just quickly pick up and put on. Beauty about these short kits is I can just give them, give it like two pulls, two pulls, and I know that fish is pretty much within that in distance. Nice fish. Nailed right in the bottom lip. And we'll just go through the process again. I'm going to drop my rig in the water. I'm just going to feed some bait. Once. Twice. And now, if you look at that, if you look at that rig, on my side try there's a, a marker, so that rig is 55 centimetres deep, so it's quite deep. However, that fish, when we slapped it over, that fish took it, I reckon, about 12 inch under the surface. And that's the beauty about moving all them shots up underneath that float, because it searches the water better. Any wise carp isn't going to take your pellet when it's falling, falling through the water faster than um, the rest of the pellets. So you're going to need to slow it right down. And slap that over. Just give it a couple of seconds, see if there's a fish there waiting for us. Right, no bite that time. Just gonna feed twice again. And then slap the rig over. Okay, now we've got a bit of bait in the peg, and there's obviously some fish coming shallow. What I'm gonna do now is use the pellets to create noise and then also my rig so I'm going to introduce slapping now although I have been like whizzing my rig over once just to straighten it out which creates a bit of noise I'm actually going to create some noise with my rig so we'll just give it one more go with using the pellets as the noise we fire them in Whip it over once, just to straighten it out. Okay, no bites then. So what I'm going to do now is cut the feeding out slightly and use my rig to bring the fish up. So all I'm going to do, just again, slap it over, but this time slap it over three times. 
what you want to be doing once you've slapped it over is come on top of the rig so bring your pole the tip of your pole over the the top of your float that way oh, as soon as a fish like that one takes the bait it hooks itself oh he's angry oh He's very angry. Oh. Oh. Oh, I need to get some pole on him. That fish then went on a right run and get it back okay again once you're back at your top five feed some bait two pulls on the puller and we know He's going to be pretty much within within our range. Not going to rush him now. Just steady lift up, steadily lift up the top kit. I thought there's a chance that fish could foul up, but he's not, he's in the mouth. He went on the right run. Ever so fit these fish. Give him one more pull on the pull up. Here he comes. He's at us. Nice common. See that that fish was hooked in the top lip then. What I'll talk you through now is just about why to look at where the fish is hooked so it's important to look when you when you when you've got your fish in look at, at at the fish's mouth and look where you've you've hooked it if it's in the top lip nine times out of ten it means that the fish has has come either up like like come up and took the bait shallow or the fish is, or you're fishing like dead depth. If the fish is in the bottom lip, it means the fish has come and took it like that. So your rigs fell and the fish has come down to get it and you've got him in the top, in the bottom lip or you're fishing over depth on the bottom. So if it's in the, the, the sides of the mouths, you, ca you can't really tell. Um, what what your what your bait's doing really when the fish has took it, but if it's in the top lip and the bottom lip, you can tell. So it's important just to to look where your hook was. So the first fish we had was hooked bang on in the bottom lip. So that means the pellet's falling and he's come and, and followed it down and took it, whereas that one was took was was hooked in the top lip. So that we slapped that rig over, it fell, and he's come from up and took it. So hopefully that makes sense. Because we've had them two, we've pretty much now found, found the depth. However, you need to be prepared to move because with shallow fishing, it's constantly changing. So you need to be on the ball with your depths. Realise how when we first started, I didn't stay on that other rig for long. However, 
I would put money on it that that's the rig we'll probably finish on. I'm just going to fade some, some bite. Because we've stopped fading for a couple of minutes there, it might take a, a bit to get, to get one there, but it's worth explaining that. Okay, what we're not getting a lot of is indications on the float, like liners to tell us to come to come even shallower. That rig's nearly three foot deep and don't, if you're gonna be fishing shallow, I don't think you wanna be fishing much, much deeper than that. So don't think the fish are like staying in the peg. I think one's coming in seeing the pellet snatching at it. So when it is like that, what you can do is use, use that other rig with a longer line. Just keep flicking it in instead of, instead of slapping. You can still slap that, that rig. But we'll give this another minute and then we'll try that other rig. There we go, it's worth giving that another minute. So I mean, still no indication, it's just literally a lovely bite. And the fish is, the fish is on. You won't even get, you won't even get time to strike. The fish will literally pull your elastic out. Again, in the top lip, that fish has come from below it and it's pretty much as simple as that you just need to remember don't be lazy the busier person shallow fishing will always win so we'll catch one more and then we'll call it a day Give it a slap first. Oh, there you go. I think that proves the point to why you don't need to you don't need to feed all the time. Literally just make a couple of a couple of slaps on the surface. Just to create that bit of noise. Because you've done all the hard work with your feeding previously to get the fish into the peg. Once the fish are in the peg, it's just about reading the peg properly, reading how them fish are feeding. And yeah, it's as simple as that. Thank you. 